Welcome to this GCP video and it is on levers. I've also done a levers uh, session on mechanical advantage and mechanical disadvantage which you can also see on YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to look at the first three types of levers and look at the difference. Okay, so there are first class, second class and third class levers. Okay, a first class lever. So, I've got a picture of a rower here with his oar and the oar is linked to the boat. Okay, so the rower is our effort. The fulcrum is the part that it attaches to the boat and the load is the water at the end of the oar that is moving. Okay, so it looks a bit like a seesaw is a first class lever. Okay. So in our body, our neck is a first class lever and it allows forwards and backwards motion as if you're heading a football. Okay, so it's a first class lever because the neck at the top here is the fulcrum, the load is the weight of my head, and if I'm bringing my head backwards, the effort is the muscles that link to the back of my cranium. Okay. Now, also in our body, we have our triceps. Now, the picture shows someone with their arm bent backwards as if they're about to maybe take a throw on or a throw. The effort comes from their tricep, which connects just at the end of here. The fulcrum is just the head and the resistance or load is at the other end. So we've got that there, we've got load, fulcrum and effort, okay? So we can see that here. I've also set this up so you can see that in action here. So I'm the effort at this end of the lever. This is the lever arm. This middle part is the fulcrum. And the end we've got our load. So when the effort starts pulling, it moves it up on the fulcrum and allows the load to be lifted, okay? And it takes, in this scenario, an equal amount of force. So the next one is second class levers. Now in a second class lever, we have the fulcrum at one end, the load in the middle, and the effort at the far end. Okay, so on my example here, we have the effort, we have the load, and we have the fulcrum. And it's much easier to lift up the load. The lever is really working easily there, and it takes no effort at all to pick the load up. This is a really useful type of lever in our body. Unfortunately, we don't have many, and the key one is our foot. So. The front of our foot is the pivot point, the fulcrum. The load is the weight of our body. And the effort is the gastrocnemius muscle, which attaches to the back of the heel bone. Okay? And as that gastrocnemius muscle contracts, a small contraction allows us to stand up on our tiptoes. And it even allows us to jump. So our gastrocnemius muscle can lift our whole body weight and it can allow us to spring off or run or jump. Okay. The last one, third class levers. We have lots of these in our body and they set up like this. The fulcrum at one end, the effort in the middle and the load at the far end. Now in the picture I've given, that's the baseball bat as a lever. Okay, so the batter is the effort his muscles swing in the bat. The fulcrum is the grip end of the bat, and the load is the rest of the bat, particularly the end where it's hitting the ball, okay? Now in our body, we have our elbow, and if we try and create flexion by contracting our bicep, that is a third class lever, because we have the fulcrum, which is the pivot point, that's the elbow, we have the effort, which is our bicep, which attaches just a little way along our lower arm. And we have the load at the far end. Let's say, for example, that would be a dumbbell weight. So you're doing a bicep curl. The bicep would contract, lifting the lower arm, creating movement at the end where the hand is joined to the dumbbell. Now that takes a lot more effort to be able to lift that up. That's a mechanical disadvantage and I'll speak about that in another video. We also have our lower leg, and both directions, extension and flexion at the knee, are third class levers. So if you're kicking a football, the quadriceps is the effort, 
moving the leg forward in extension to kick the football. And in the lower picture, if you are doing a run and pushing off, and as your foot is coming up towards your gluteals, your hamstrings are creating the effort and bringing your foot upwards as a third class leader. Okay, so I've got a couple of memory tools to help you remember the order of each lever. Okay, so in this one, a little saying. So we have Ethel, the elf fell. So a first class lever is Ethel. Effort at one end, fulcrum in the middle, load at the other end. Elf is effort at the end, load in the middle, fulcrum at the other end. And the last one, third class lever, fulcrum at one end, F, effort in the middle, E, and load at the far end, L. Okay? There is another way to remember them, and that is F, L, E, one, two, three. So there's another little rhyme there. So the F is the middle letter for a first class lever. So the fulcrum is in the middle. And you could then have the load or the effort at either end. L for load, okay? On the second class lever, load is in the middle with effort and fulcrum at either end. And the last one, E, third class lever, has the effort in the middle. In the exam, the exam board can show you the levers in either direction. So what I've shown here is two levers, two third class levers, but opposite way rounds. The exam won't always put them in the way that you've maybe learned them. It can be the other way around. So FLE123 is a good way of remembering whichever one's in the middle is that lever. 